All right, guys. So here's where we're at. Um, I got this this brace up here and up here as well. Okay, and you can see this is my wing tube. Okay, and you can see I made a mark here and I made a mark here. The plan showed 28. I did mine 28 and 3 8 uh, Unless my measurements are off, that would be center to center of the wing uh, spars. How I did that was I made a mark here. I measured 28 and 3 8 to here. Okay. I laid my tube on that table and made marks with my ink pen. I took this little piece of 3 quarter tubing and I slid it on top of the 5 eighths. Right, this will slide on top. It doesn't fit perfect. I just pinned it with my finger and took a paint marker and went all the way around it. Now I know that I can take this tube and go back and forth. Right, I can get that plumb level, whatnot, and get those marks exact. Then I can screw it down. Remember how in the earlier video I talked about these Nibco clamps, and these are really nice. Again, these are not the cheap ones from Home Depot. If you really want to make your project enjoyable, get your hands on the ones plumbers use. Okay, Home Depot does not sell real plumbing products. That's all a bunch of Chinese stuff. This here is super thick. They're not expensive. You can, or, you can order them. Uh, you can go to your wholesale house and get them. But they're really rigid and they snap on. Can you hear that sound? I'll hear it snap. See how it snaps? Okay, and you can just line that up on your center, and your marks are already on that. Okay, now, remember how I wasn't sure about that rack I built? I'm really starting to like that rack. I love the rack. Gotta love the rack. The rack is cool. Because it allows me to brace things. It's big enough, you know, like over here, you know, I, I put this assembly together. Well, then I decided to throw a board across here and make it more rigid. Again, using two whole copper straps. Okay, those are 5 eighths because copper tube size, CTS, has a 5 eighths outside diameter identical to this tubing, so they fit perfect. But this rack allowed me to screw it in and hold that. That's solid as a rock. So that worked out really well. Now, i got to start putting these members in, right? So I'm going to go from here and down, then from here to here. Now, I know there's a tendency for people to want to make this one piece, right? You come down here, you come up, you come over, and you come down. That, in my opinion, is a grave mistake. That is a serious mistake because you have now violated the truss structure. You violated every rule a truss, truss structure stands for. You know, just, <clears throat> just as a reminder, and you can see my, my points are lined up here, the entire structural integrity of this fuselage is reliant upon common center points. At no time when you bend a tubing, especially something as critical as this wing structure, because this is very, very critical, um, when you bend it, you will never ever be able to have a converging center point. It's mathematically impossible, it's physically impossible, you cannot do it. Tubing, especially chromoly, has bend allowances. And you will never be able to bend a pipe that tight, okay, and make those points converge. It can't happen. It just, it, it cannot happen. So, now, I would say people want to bend that in one piece just out of fear of possibly cutting, tubing, and welding it as if the weld won't hold. Um, if you are that unsure about your welding ability, you need to stop and learn better skills because that weld is is important on every part of the airframe. So if, if you're worried about up here, it's actually the opposite. I can tell you the truth. If I, if I had my choice to fly two airplanes, one was every joint lined up on, on a center and it was tack welded and not fully welded, okay? and someone said, fly this plane or one that's fully welded and none of the centers line up, I would easily, easily fly that tack welded fuselage before that fully welded one because that fully welded one where they're not lined up is a dangerous machine. It's, it's absolutely dangerous. The whole idea behind a truss structure 
is to make sure all your points line up. Every time you put pressure anywhere in this airplane, energy gets transferred. If you're not on center lines, you violate your triangles, right? Now, the Legal Eagle is kind of a unique airplane because there's a gap in this in this cockpit. Remember, this is a this is a not a normal fuselage like most of them have um, four longer ons. This this has three, and then it gets busted up in here. So there's this is a real you know this is a great big open area. So if you start violating trust law, you know, and, and the laws that have to do with how trusses work, you, you you are flying a very dangerous machine. I'm convinced of that because I've been part of doing structural analysis on a pits. Okay, just to give you an idea, a pits qualifies for a lot of those members in that fuselage to be quarter inch tubing, but they don't. They use five eighths. They use larger tubing. But when you do the math on a, on a pits, you could do quarter inch tubing. It's just it's not practical. It wouldn't make any sense. But that tells you how strong a truss structure is. Okay. It is not the weld that makes it strong. It's the ability to transfer energy throughout the entire fuselage. You're sharing loads. You're sharing load between all these points. They're, they're absorbing it, okay? So that wing structure, especially on a legal eagle, really has a big job to do because this cockpit is open. It's really open. So you do not, absolutely, under any circumstances, want to start bending this tubing. Especially in, in, in two spots, front and back, that, that is, well, I, I just, it is a mistake. You know, and again, I have to ask, why would somebody want to bend it? It would be, a, the only reason would be a fear, right? It would be a fear that you're cutting a, a, a tube that's by a wing. Well, I got news for you, every tubing in here is cut, every tubing. So that is not a valid reason. And by bending it, it is weaker than a welded joint by all means weaker so I, I would urge you to cut it because that allows you to get right on this center you want that tubing to hit dead center as you come down and you know even on a bad weld as long as your centers line up it's a better structure now you obviously don't want a bad weld you want a very good weld but I uh, will I'll get into how I weld and kind of show you my method of doing it I'm by no means an expert okay but uh, I've done uh, tests on my welds and, and they hold very well but if we go back to a truss structure this triangle if you mauled this I mean if you took a, a 20 pound sledgehammer and started mauling this th this would just it just would not bend it would not it's a perfect triangle you know it's a very strong structure but if you start taking these points and you start kitty wampusing this one and moving it off the center and you started mauling this thing, it would bend. Absolutely bend. It'd bend at the weakest point. So if you bend this up here, where's your weakest point in the whole airplane? By bending the wing structure, exactly where you don't want it to be weak. You see? So that's that. And that's kind of where I'm at.